So I finally upgraded my big camera. I went from an A6500 to this new Sony FX30, which I'm actually using to film this right now here in my room on the cruise ship. But I wanna tell you the reasons why I decided to upgrade, show you some really great accessories that you'd wanna get with this FX30, and a couple of surprise costs that I wasn't expecting. And welcome to my room on the cruise ship. I am a musician, but also a videographer as well. So let's just go ahead and get started. Mr. Black. By the way, welcome to the channel. My name is Danny Black. I love to share with you cool gear that comes my way. If you're new here, don't be a stranger. Click that button right there. I'll put links to everything down in the description so you can find it nice and easily, plus a surprise link. Also, if you are a video editor and you wanna add some amazing effects to your videos, do check out Motion Array. This is a no-brainer website where you can download a bunch of different effects. It'll just save you a lot of time and money, but I'll tell you more about that later on in the video. But if you do duck out early, you can check out the link in the description or the pinned comment and just, just check it out. Okay, so first off, yes, I'm filming with the FX30 right now, so you can see you know, what it looks like. But when I am showing some B-roll and shooting with some other cameras, I'll make sure you, you know which camera it is down here. Down here? Is it gonna be down here? Yeah, why not? All right, so the FX30 unboxing experience is probably as green as it gets. I mean, this is very recyclable. I only got the FX30 body because I already have different E-mount lenses from the A6500. It is the same kind of lenses. And for me, there are three lenses that I love, which is the Sony 18 to 135 millimeters for that good wide angle, but also you can really zoom in to get some good candid shots like I do here on the cruise ship. I'm filming it with the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 which is what gives it that nice bokeh background. And oddly enough, my other favorite was the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle lens. But after four years of using it a lot, for some reason it just kind of died on me. So I needed to get a new one and I did order the new Sony PZ 10 to 20 millimeter lens. So I'll have to share that with you on a future video. Now the FX30 is actually a really affordable prosumer camera, especially for this kind of quality. And if you are using it for like paid gigs, uh, you'll pay for it in no time. However, there are some extra expenses that I wasn't really expecting. I did get two extra batteries because you know, sometimes it's nice to have extra batteries and those aren't really cheap. But I did notice after using this a lot is that the batteries do last quite a bit, especially compared to the A6500 and those small little batteries that they have. So really you might only need to have one extra battery, but it's better to have it and not need it than uh, need it and not have it. The other big crushing expense that I was not expecting was the SD card. Now the SD card from my Sony a6500 did work. I was able to shoot 4K 60, but if I wanted to shoot 4K 120, and I'll get to those specs later on, uh, you need to upgrade your card to this one right here. And it's not cheap. But for me, I wanna make sure I can utilize this camera to its full potential. And this card right here does work really well and I have had no issues with it whatsoever. And if you do have the FX3 or FX30 and you're looking for some good accessories, check out this Ulanzi cage right here. It fits on so good, but also just gives you so much more utility space. It's got all these quarter thread mounts around it and cold shoe mounts, but they also have their F22 quick lock system throughout it. So you can add these little attachments really quickly, especially this handle right here. I love this handle. You can attach it to the top, you can attach it to the bottom. You can kind of just customize it the way you want. And I even love their F22 Magic Arm. It's just great for so many different uses. You can put mics, lights, all that stuff on there. So yeah, if you have the FX3 or FX30, you should definitely check that out. Link will be in the description. So question is, why did I even upgrade from the A6500 to the FX30? It's been almost six years since I bought the A6500. So that's a long time to have a camera, but the quality is still great on it and I will still use it a lot. But there were some limitations and especially working on cruise ships, not just as a musician, but they do hire me to do some video work for them for their social media, for some ads and things like that. And I just wanted a more professional camera, something that just had a lot more to it. And actually a big part of that is the stabilization. So you can turn on their steady shot stabilization or active stabilization, and it does a really good job when you're just trying to get some quick shots and you don't want some shaky footage. It does keep it nice and stable, not quite gimbal quality, but just good enough so that you don't hate your footage. And the update that probably got me the most was going from 4K 30 on the A6500. I wanted to be able to do 60, because you know, if you're shooting some B-roll or maybe you get a shot and you wanna be able to slow it down, at least 
half speed. But this one even surpasses that and you can do 4K 120 frames per second. That's right, you can slow it down up to four times and just get some really solid footage. Just great for B-roll. It's great if you're just trying to get some really cool shots and just trying to smooth it out a little bit more. I love that feature, it works really well. And the coolest part about that, and cool is kind of the word of it, is it doesn't overheat. So with my old camera shooting just 4K 30, between 15 to 20 minutes of filming, it would overheat. This, because of the way they have their cooling system throughout it and some fans, it won't overheat. And that's a really important thing. You definitely don't wanna be running into overheating issues. So another really good upgrade that made me wanna get this is uh, having the screen be able to pop out and you could see yourself. Obviously, I film myself a lot talking to the camera and with the old one, it's like you had to have an extra monitor or some of the other accessories that you could have to use your phone or whatever. But sometimes you don't wanna to have to set all that stuff up. You just wanna be able to pop the screen out and see yourself. And this one, you can. Now, one of the best parts about shooting with the other camera and not being able to see yourself is you learn to look at the lens and not at yourself on the screen on the side. So it's always good to remember to use the screen as a reference, but you always wanna be looking at the lens when you're talking to the camera. I also love the layout of this camera the way that you can pop the SD cards in on the side instead of the bottom, which makes it real easy. And I did say SD card, that's right, you can have multiple cards in there, which is great to be able to have backup copies of your photos or videos, just in case if you're on a really important shoot. Also on the other side, you get a full HDMI out. You also get a microphone input and a headphone out, so you can monitor the sound coming in just right from the camera, which is really important. You also have USB-C and micro USB for charging or for connectivity and data transfer. You can also use this as a webcam that way as well. And there is a lot more to discover and learn about this because when you're looking at it, you can see there's a lot of good buttons that you can use. Great for setting up shortcuts and just being able to just shoot your videos the best way that you can. So yeah, this camera came out and I saw the specs, I saw the features and I was like, yep, this is the one I was waiting for. I mean, I was waiting a while. I was ready probably two years ago to upgrade and nothing came out that really wanted me to jump on it until this one and especially the price tag on it. And I'm not trying to convince you to buy this camera. That's not what I'm trying to do. But if you are someone that's maybe in the same boat, it's kind of a weird analogy on this. So yeah, if you're in the same situation that I was in and you're wondering if you should upgrade and get the FX30, I think you'd be very happy with it. And if you're a video editor, I think you'd be really happy with Motion Array. So you're a content creator, you're editing videos, maybe you wanna take those videos to a higher level with some really cool effects. Motion Array is the way to go. I've been telling all of my video editing friends about Motion Array and the ones that have signed up for it have been loving it. They see the value in it completely. You can look through their website and find different titles, logos, intros, and so much more. And it's just super easy to download all the effects that you like. And if you click on the link in the description or the pinned comment, you can actually save over $100 on a year subscription. And it sounds like an ad, I know, but seriously, I'm saving you money. I've used other effects websites before and I've spent way, way more money on that for effects that get outdated, I just don't even use anymore. It's just so much better to have a monthly or year long plan where I can just download as many effects as I want and use them as I want to. And they're adding new effects all the time. So check it out, it's really great. You'll be editing a lot faster and have a higher level professionalism with some of these really cool effects that will actually save you a lot of time in creating. All right, so that's your job. Check out Motion Array and uh, let's get back to the video. So yeah, check out Motion Array. It is really good. I have a lot of video editor friends that have gotten it and they love it. It's just, it makes so much sense. Just check it out. But other than that, I just wanted to share this video with you, show you the FX30. It's gonna be a lot of fun to play around with and see what else it can do. And I'm really excited to take you along with me. A lot of really cool stuff happening on this channel, so stay tuned and I'll see you next time.